Hello everybody, this is Alex Honor from Rundeck. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, plugins and how they can really improve the user experience for people who write and run jobs. A lot of times the plugins that we see written are just wrappers around various utilities. And I've got one here that comes up quite a lot, uh, how to put things, manage things in S3. And of course, if you've used this command line interface, you're, you're probably aware of some of these commands and use some of these copy an object, uh, list uh, something in a bucket, make buckets, and so on. Now, um, for those that are handy with the command line, they are used to all these kinds of flags. You can see I've got dry run and quiet include exclude. There's a lot of things here. Now, if I was to ask a job writer that, yeah, it's cool to use uh, a command line like this, but they'd have to learn all of the ins and outs of which of these options is actually important. How are they going to authenticate the command line so it can actually talk to the AWS service and get the secret key and all that stuff? Well, it gets a little bit harder, and of course it could be a lot more error prone and just less user friendly. So what we'd really like to offer job writers is something more like this. So here's that same idea using the, the CP command to copy something into S3, but now we've got this nice set of text fields. We've got some Boolean flags here. And you know, if you're a real power user, maybe, uh, and you understand the command line options, you could even supply your own. And then that question of what about the you know secrets? Where is that secret key? Well, now we don't have to worry about that either. We can use the run deck key store to get that type of info and not have to share that to different job writers or even have to know how to do that. So I think you can see that this, this kind of interface is a lot more user friendly for a job writer than that one. And of course you can control which flags for the utility that you want to wrap uh, to be the ones that you anticipate uh, as the most used ones. Um, but uh, how do you do this? How do you actually turn something like this into a step plugin? Well, I'm going to go over here. We have a, a number of step plugins here at the Rundeck Plugins um, organization in GitHub. I'm going to go into this one here and do a little code walkthrough just to show you it's pretty simple to, to make a wrapper like this and create a step plugin. Now, we've done a, a video earlier that introduced plugins, especially those that can be written in shell script, and they all have the same kind of structure. You create a, a directory and it takes a couple of subdirectories, a content subdirectory, optionally a resources subdirectory. You can put things in there, your plugin needs, and also an icon you might like to show. And importantly, a config file that tells Rundeck how it's going to call your wrapper to call the underlying utility. So let's start with that. Um, it's a YAML file, and you can define one or more steps in here. Um, here's that CP step we've been talking about. Uh, you can see it. there's something called a provider, and there's more than one in here, but we're just going to look at that first CP one. And you can see it has source and destination, include, exclude. So those are those text fields that uh, we showed at the top. Things that take a, a checkbox like that, you would define as a Boolean. And you can see there's different kinds of input properties for the plugin that will be displayed here in the UI. Let's just take a final look at this one here. This will let us access things from the key store. Takes a little bit more um, settings, but basically just telling Rundeck to read it out of the, the key store and to automatically define that as a variable to your little wrapper. So what do these little wrappers look like? This example here is uh, one done in Python. Python's a very popular uh, way of wrapping these kind of utilities and turning them into step plugins for Rundeck. Um, nothing too exciting or, or sophisticated here. Um, really what we're doing is just creating a, a few arguments, two arguments actually, source and destination. Um, these are going to be passed by the plugin. Let's go back over. I'll go back to the uh, plugin YAML really quickly just to show you that 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 script gets invoked like this. So 
We're going to use Python as the script interpreter. This is that file that we're going to run. And these are the arguments that we're going to pass to it. So go back over here to the script again. And so that's all we're really doing is we're just uh, accepting those two command arguments. This is the command we're actually going to run. You can see it's AWS S3CP commands, just like you saw in the AWS manual. We're passing the source and destination argument. But because all those other settings in the, in the UI are basically optional, we're also going to take advantage of another feature, which is Runtec exports all of these kinds of inputs as environment variables prefixed with RD config. So if I've got a, a plugin config uh, boolean called quiet, it basically just turns that into an environment variable like that. And if it's been set true, in other words, it's been checked, then I'm going to add that flag to this command list. So this is a pretty, you know, normal way or typical way that you can define a command line string to run in Python. And that's all we're really doing here. It's just checking to see if a flag's been set, adding that argument to the command list, and uh, away we go. So this is really hiding the usage of the command line utility from the user so they don't have to know, you know, which flags may be uh, mutually exclusive or which flags uh, go together. This is all um, wrapped up by this, uh, this little script. Uh, finally, we want to make sure we've got the AWS cred credentials set. Same thing, we're taking advantage of uh, Rundeck passing those plugin properties as environment variables and exporting them uh, as they're set. Finally, this is sort of the meat of it. We're going to call that command now that we have the options and the AWS environment variables defined. And whatever the return code is, we're going to exit that unless there's a failure, an exception. We'll print the error message and then exit uh, exit one. So really, it's a, a wrapper that eventually just invokes that command line utility. It's a good citizen in that it's going to return whatever return code it has back to Rundeck. So you could have error handlers catch exit codes and so on. So your plugin basically ends up being a directory with this one config file that describes what steps you want to run, the kind of interpreter that you're going to use, the script file that you're going to run, and any arguments. And the rest of these things uh, all become environment variables, or you can pass them as command line arguments, as we've done here in some cases. You take that whole uh, subdirectory, this whole directory here, and create a zip file of it, copy it into the plugin directory, and as soon as you open up the job editor, you'll see an interface like this. Okay, so that was a quick example of how you can use Python to wrap a command utility and improve the user experience and standardize your automation tasks in Rundeck jobs. Thank you.